morning everyone. So for today's video we're going to look at infinite limits and actually we've kind of looked at some of these before we just haven't specifically talked about them. Um, but basically what infinite limits are is that if you look at values of a function and the one that we're going to look at today is f of x equals 1 over x squared. Um, if you look at the values of the function whether you're looking at a table or a graph we can see that as x approaches a value, and in this case as x approaches 0, from either side, the y values grow bigger and bigger. Okay, And so if we look at the example here in this drawing, we can see that if we go from the left side, as we get closer and closer to 0, notice the y values go up okay, to infinity. And as we approach from the right side, notice that the y values also go up to infinity. And you can kind of see that from the table too as well, right? So if um, notice this plus minus, instead of having in the previous notes we had from both sides, we're kind of kind of killing uh, two birds with one stone, so to speak. But as you can see that if I get closer and closer to zero, so notice these numbers get closer and closer to zero, these y values get very large, okay? And the closer you get, you'll get larger and larger values. Um, and so it doesn't approach a finite number. So just like what we talked about before, infinity is not an actual number. So when we talked about um, continuity, for, ex for instance, if we showed that it went like around a vertical asymptote, we showed that it went to infinity, we said that the limit didn't exist, right? So in this case, we would say the same thing as x approaches 0, f of x, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x does not exist. But again, we use limit notation and we write the infinity symbol because we, we want to know the behavior of the graph. So yes, it doesn't exist, but when we say that it equals to infinity, in our mind, we can kind of picture what's happening to the behavior of this function. And so that's what infinite limits are. So even though we talk about how it doesn't exist, we're using it to kind of gauge and understand what's happening to the y values. And so by definition, it says if f of x grows arbitrarily large for all x sufficiently close but not equal to that value, so just like up here, right, it doesn't equal, we, we don't look at what happens when it equals 0 because when it does equal 0, um, it doesn't actually exist, but what happens when we get close to it, we see that the limit is infinity, right, in this particular example. Um, and the same is true for the negative. So if f of x is negative and grows arbitrarily large, arbitrary large in magnitude for all x sufficiently close but not equal to a, we also can get um, negative infinity, right? So that would be like if the function goes down. So um, let's look at some examples because that's the best way to understand. So in these three examples, it says determine the following limits. And so um, I'm just going to kind of draw a sketch of the graph on the side, just so that we, you can kind of see how I'm thinking about this. But if I were to draw this function, um, and you should be able to tell by looking at it algebraically as well, there is a denominator here. And if x is 2, there is a vertical asymptote. All right, we can't have 0 in the denominator. And if I were to graph this function, it would kind of look something like this. All right, and so let's define this. Um, we want to find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left side. So from the left side, what's happening? Well, as I get closer and closer to the asymptote from the left, notice the y values are forever going down. And so from the left side, we can say it's going to negative infinity. And like, let's see what happens. Um, we want to find the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side, right? See that plus? And notice it's the same function in all of these. And let's see, if we're going from the right side, we're coming from the right side, so now if I get closer and closer to the asymptote, notice I am also going to negative infinity from the right side. And so the overall limit here, right, and that's now it's asking the limit as x approaches to, notice that it is the same, right, it's approaching the same type of y values on both sides. So the overall limit is also equal to negative infinity. Okay, so um, let's talk about vertical asymptotes. So by definition it says if the limit as x approaches a of f of x 
is equal to positive negative infinity. Um, the limit as x approaches a from the left of f, x, f of x equals positive negative infinity, or the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x equals positive or negative infinity, then the line x equals a is a vertical asymptote of f. And we can see it from the example above, right? And so from the left side, we can see that it does approach negative infinity. From the right side, it approaches negative infinity. Um, you know, and the overall limit as well shows that it approaches negative infinity at, you know, as x approaches 2 in that example. And we can see that there is a vertical asymptote there. Okay? So let's take a look at some examples. So if I look at this example here, here's a graph of h. And it's telling us that there are vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2 and at x equals 3. And we want to determine the following limits. So the first one says the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left. All right, so we're at negative 2. So we're looking there. From the left side, I'm coming from the left, and as I'm getting closer and closer to that asymptote, notice the function is going down forever. So what kind of va y values go down forever? That would be negative infinity. Okay, um, and we gotta find the limit as x approaches negative two from the right side. So same asymptote that we're looking at, but from the right side, oops. We're looking at what's happening as I get closer and closer to this function, or to this asymptote, and notice, same thing. Y, oops, y values go down forever. And then notice here, it's asking for the overall limit. So does the left and the right equal each other? So from the left side, we said it was negative infinity. From the right side, we said it also approached negative infinity. So the overall limit is negative infinity. And then now let's look at the other vertical asymptote here. And it says, um, find the limit as x approaches 3 from the left. So here's 3. If I come from the left side, notice I'm going up as I get closer and closer to that asymptote. So that is positive infinity. And then we want to find the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. So now we're on this side. I get closer and closer to that asymptote, notice it's going down. So what kind of y values go down? Well, that's negative infinity. And then we want the overall limit. So let's see, does the left side equal the right side? So on the left, it went to positive infinity. On the right, it went to negative infinity. So because they do not approach the same values, we say that it does not exist. And that is it for infinite limits.